when we think of the cultural district, uh, a lot of folks tend to think about the museums naturally uh, because we do have several world-class uh, museums. We can take a great deal of pride. We have one of the finest collections of museums anywhere in the country. And yet the cultural district is more than the museums and more than the Will Rogers Memorial Center, though that's a big attraction, now Dickey's Arena. But we have many growing businesses in and around the cultural district and uh, neighborhoods as well. Single family, residential neighborhoods uh, surrounding the cultural district. A large amount of uh, multifamily apartments and condominiums as well. We have a lot of issues that uh, arise from the intersection of um, uh, tourism on the one hand, attracting many visitors uh, from far and wide, uh, and those who call the cultural district home. Uh, and uh, so that requires a lot of negotiation, a, a lot of discussion uh, and compromise. One example would be uh, the Arlington Heights neighborhood, which is right across Montgomery Street from uh, the museums and Dickey's Arena. The tendency that uh, a lot of folks have to want to park for free on neighborhood streets uh, when those streets were not designed uh, for large numbers of visitors. And so a neighborhood uh, a parking permit program was uh, one of the solutions that, that emerged in response to that issue. Uh, a lot of the residential property owners who didn't necessarily live there decided to rent out uh, their houses uh, to the degree that visitors might use those residences as party houses and stay up late at night and uh, make noise and do other unneighborly things, uh, that created an issue as well. Uh, and so uh, we had to deal with uh, the enforcement of zoning regulations. We want our single family neighborhoods to, uh, to be more uh, peaceful and, and that's what uh, our uh, neighborhood residents expect. We have a neighborhood called Linwood, which is right in the middle of the uh, cultural district. It was historically a, uh, a low and moderate income neighborhood. It was hit by a tornado in the year 2000. Uh, and uh, a lot of the older houses were, uh, were lost and actually created an opportunity to, to redevelop much of that property. And, and the neighborhood has, has really changed. Uh, and, and that redevelopment itself has brought about a range of issues about traffic, about parking, about uh, density, about affordability all difficult issues that uh, big cities face. Uh, in respect to, uh, to West 7th, uh, that's the, uh, the street that connects downtown directly uh, to the museums. And uh, we've seen a great deal of change along West 7th, truly a, a transformation. We've seen um, a lot of interesting adaptive reuse of older historic structures. A good example is Montgomery Plaza, uh, which was a Montgomery Ward department store building that was at risk of being demolished. Fortunately, that didn't happen. An area that we sometimes call the uh, West 7th core area, where you have uh, a collection of older warehouse buildings that have been, again, reused adaptively for more active purposes, and, and they also have been a big success. Uh, it came about uh, in part uh, because uh, uh, a, uh, a deed restriction uh, was ruled uh, by the courts to be invalid. It was a, a restriction that prevented the sale of alcohol. Uh, going back to uh, the 19th century, it made it possible for a lot of folks to move into the district and create uh, what some people call an entertainment district. It brings folks uh, together for a variety of activities. Uh, they're not for everybody. In fact, uh, for a lot of young folks, the evening is just beginning when older folks are just going to bed. <laughs> That uh, core area has probably been the site of the most contentious disputes when you mix residences, and we do have a, a large number of people who live there, along with uh, businesses of different kinds and bars and the clientele associated with those establishments. You get some volatile combinations. Now, a few years ago, uh, all of these groups came to us and said, please bring us together and help us to uh, find common ground and." Uh, practical solutions uh, because we want to coexist. Basically our approach was to collect objective data and rely on the facts before dealing with the emotional and we find that when we collect hard data and analyze it 
uh, under a bright light, we can see more clearly uh, and can gain a better understanding and move beyond uh, the finger pointing and <laughs> accusations and the uh, presumptions of, uh, uh, about the uh, uh, motivation uh, that others may have. And so, for example, we found that a lot of this activity was occurring late at night and uh, we needed to find ways to control uh, noise and got the cooperation of the bars. They saw that it would be in their interest to operate their businesses in, in ways that were compatible with residents and uh, in other businesses in the, the core area. Uh, we saw that uh, uh, parking was a problem. It um, seems that uh, a lot of folks wanted to go there and there weren't enough parking spaces to accommodate everybody who wanted to go there. One of the ideas that emerged uh, was that we uh, regulate parking with the use of parking meters that would uh, provide for more turnover. We saw, for example, that uh, it was difficult for the police to control large crowds. When these bars let out at two o'clock in the morning, uh, there would be uh, literally hundreds of young people, who, each of whom uh, may have had one or two or more drinks, and uh, their behavior uh, was enough to uh, raise eyebrows. And uh, should we have any kind of emergency situations and a police car or a fire truck or an ambulance uh, would need to maneuver through the streets, they would find it very difficult because the streets were totally covered up. So we found that we needed more sidewalk space. So we allocated uh, some capital funds to build sidewalks. Uh, and it's our job to, to find solutions uh, to those issues in cooperation uh, with the residents, with the property owners, with the business leaders. Uh, one of the uh, resources uh, that, uh, that we use uh, to, to find solutions is uh, uh, an organization uh, called the Cultural District Alliance. Uh, I happen to, to serve on the board uh, representing the city. Uh, that organization actually brings together uh, around a common table representatives from all of these parties, from the museums, from the other cultural institutions, uh, from uh, the, the businesses of different kinds, uh, and from the residents. Uh, and they get together and they talk through uh, these issues and, and try to come to consensus and try to speak with one voice. The cultural district in the West 7th Village, as we call it, have uh, grown and changed dramatically over the past 20 years or so, uh, where we have an eclectic mix of arts institutions, uh, world-class uh, museums, rodeo, other sporting events, many different businesses, uh, uh, large-scale institutions like the University of North Texas Health Science Center, and a variety of residential uh, living options all within a, a walkable environment. It's where Fort Worth uh, lives out. It's a motto about cowboys and culture, and we'd like to, to show it off to, to visitors whenever we can.